Thank you all for, for coming. I, I really, really appreciate it. We've, uh, it's been a, not really a year since the last workshop, but this is our second annual workshop, so we'll call it a year. I want to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing in the meantime, but before I move on, I want to stop on this slide um, because the, there are two things that are very important here. One, one is Kathy, who's been really extraordinary as a PI for us and, and extremely helpful, um, very well connected, very well respected, gives us the, the right amount of freedom to pursue new activities and then pulls us back when we need to be pulled back and is extremely helpful. Uh, the other is that we're coordinated by Columbia University and the coordinated part is really important. Uh, because the nature of what we do is to be a cross-sector, uniquely neutral entity. We're not exclusively in the service of Columbia University. Uh, we love being here and we love uh, providing help and connections whenever we can, but we're really in the service of the entire Northeast, of a cross-sector, so uh, industry, academia, government, nonprofit, etc. And I think that's really important because that's where we can add the most value. So Kathy's already pointed out our, our geographic uh, region. Uh, a few things to, to note here, a slightly different uh, way of saying what, what our mission is, is really to provide pr frameworks for public-private collaboration across sectors for high-priority challenges that, that need data-driven solutions. So that's really the, on a high level what we're trying to do. How we do that, I think, is a work in progress that involves all of you in the room. Uh, one of the things that we realized early on, the executive directors of all of the hubs, is that some of the problems that we're dealing with are not really constrained to our regions. They're really national scale problems. So very early on, we decided that we needed to coordinate closely. We have uh, weekly meetings, uh, the different executive directors, and, and you'll see a little bit later in the presentation that there's a lot that we've been doing to coordinate across the hubs when it makes sense to have national scale. The other thing, uh, which may be a, a, a result of this is uh, the folks who are in this room, uh, or, and maybe some still trickling in, actually represent many more states, and, and in fact also Washington DC and Quebec, uh, than our region. Uh, so this is a good sign, because this is, this is the way we want this to work, to, to have a lot of folks within our region, but also to be able to reach out beyond our region, uh, including to Quebec. Um, another point before I get into the meat of the presentation, which I think is important to realize, even though our name implies that we are uh, exclusively about technology, uh, really, it's not exclusively about technology. I, I love this slide because it's a, it's a superimposition of the digital world on the world of humans. And, and notice that the world of humans is still bigger because we have to remember that all of the technology that we develop is really in the service of humans. The other side of it is that a lot of the challenges in disseminating data-driven solutions uh, are not technological. There are plenty of technological challenges, but a lot of the challenges are really people challenges. So organizational challenges, cultural challenges, regulatory challenges, et cetera. And for us to fulfill our mission, I think we have to not focus exclusively on that, but be aware of it in, in all of the initiatives that we launch. And that's something that I think throughout the presentation we'll be able to highlight a little bit. So by the numbers, what does the, the last year look like? Uh, as Kathy mentioned, we've done a lot of events. Um, so 18 events so far, uh, which have reached directly something like 2,700 people. Uh, our website, thanks to Katie in here somewhere, um, was relaunched and it's, it's uh, much more functional than it was before. A lot of the social media components are in there. Um, we're not breaking records, but uh, so far we're getting on average something like 4,600 unique visitors a month. So all told, we're reaching tens of thousands of people uh, over the last year. And I think the question now is what we do with that, what we do with the buzz that we've generated, with the momentum, with the engagement that we've gotten. Uh, so from a funding perspective, uh, I think we've done, we've done quite well. We've brought in an additional four and a half million dollars, which includes the, the spoke uh, and ring funds. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, so that's seven projects, including uh, the Innovator Internship Project that Kathy mentioned. And also we've got some seed funding to bring in some graduate students that in part will focus on, on putting together uh, what we're calling our big data resource map. And the idea there is, uh, as we've been going out into the community trying to understand where we can add the most value, a lot of folks have told us that uh, they don't really have a grasp of all of the resources that are available from data sets to computational resources to talent or organizational uh, uh, skills, et cetera. So this is something that we've, we've gotten a lot of interest in. So we're trying to create a pilot now, uh, starting with the, the graduate students that we're going to have for seven weeks. 
Uh, so a lot of events, the, the, one, the photo that you see here is an event that we did uh, with the White House Data Cabinet Policy Working Group, which is a really interesting group. Um, as Kathy mentioned, we're doing a lot of outreach across sectors, including government, in this case, the federal government. So this group is actually representative of all of the chief data officers in the federal agencies and, and their staff. Uh, so it's a great group for us to be engaged with. One of the things that was really concerning to them is how do they do a better job at building organizational data capacity? Uh, so that's what we did with this project, uh, with this uh, workshop, is to bring together a cross-sector, and, and that's really probably the most important thing in this photo, is a cross-sector of government agencies. So there are multiple government agencies represented, multiple companies represented, multiple universities and nonprofits from around the country. And I think that's part of the power that, that we can provide in bringing people together and collecting those ideas, and then hopefully in being able to act on those ideas. So Northeast Road Trip, I've, I've spent a lot of time on the road, nine cities visited so far, uh, which is still only scratching the surface. Uh, part of the reason we're doing this is, is going back to the original idea that the NSF had in making us regionally focused hubs. It's a lot easier to meet people face to face and that's still extremely important. Um, I've been speaking to people across our stakeholder groups to really try to understand where we can add the most value, what are the challenges that they're facing, and where can we, given our nature as an organization, uh, help out. Um, also trying to identify data resources in the Northeast and, and really exploring different models for membership, consortium membership, other ways that we can engage uh, on an organizational level with the different sectors that we're serving. Uh, so really briefly, the big data map, I, I already told you the idea, we've been exploring with a number of different organizations how we create a dynamic community-driven resource. There are other efforts out there which we don't want to duplicate, so we're trying to create something that's unique that can really engage the community to help us in a dynamic manner understand what resources, what resources are available. And we're focusing probably initially uh, on data sets, data sets with challenges, and, and skills and talent, so individuals and organizations that can provide something that's needed uh, to take advantage of these data sets. Um, the other uh, area that we're exploring, and we've gotten a lot of feedback that there's a lot of room in, in different sectors for cross-industry, cross-sector consortia. Uh, I'll give a, a couple of examples later on of those, to, uh, but we'll, we'll move on from there, but there's a lot of interest. So the next few slides I'm going to buzz through really quickly, um, just to give you a sense of the outreach. So this is by no means comprehensive. Um, this is just a set of the organizations that we've been either in active dialogue with, that we've been talking about from a, from a needs challenges perspective, what are their needs and their challenges, uh, or that are actually part of our, of our funded spokes and, and rings. So you see, this is the industry slide. A lot of companies, probably many of which you recognize there. Uh, a lot of universities, this is, is not even close to being comprehensive. These are, are mostly the universities in our funded spokes and rings. Um, government agencies, again, not comprehensive. We've been speaking to a lot of other entities there. And nonprofits as well. So you kind of get a sense of what we can do across these sectors. We do have a pretty big reach. Now we have to figure out what's the best way of bringing all of these sectors together to do something that's really interesting. Uh, from the cross-hub coordination standpoint, this is uh, representing three of the four hubs. Uh, Melissa couldn't be there that day at the Big Data PI meeting last year. Uh, a lot of what we've been doing is, is um, focusing efforts in, in these types of initiatives. So the first one there is having discussions uh, with cloud vendors. Uh, we want to make it easy for them. Microsoft Azure is, is here in the room, Vani Mandava, who's going to talk a little bit about a, a, a collaboration that we've uh, set up with Microsoft. Um, we want to make it easy for them not to have to go to four separate hubs to talk about essentially the same thing. And we also wanted to have programs that scale across the hubs. In this case, um, there are uses of the Microsoft Azure credits that are going to be specific to the Northeast, but there are also uses that are going to cross the country. So this is one example of how we're collaborating between the hubs. Um, we've been speaking to the Department of Transportation uh, about a project that involves a really unique and very useful data set on natural driving behavior. That's something that we're doing across the hubs. Um, we were awarded a joint venture status by the National Technical Innovation Service, which is a piece of the Department of Commerce. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it's a really interesting initiative. What they're doing is, is trying to aggregate the demand for data science projects in the federal government 
and put those out to 35 pre-selected joint venture partners to be able to, to fulfill those projects. And, and we are one of those partners along with IBM and KPMG and Dell, et cetera. And that's something that we've done across the hubs uh, because we want to have national scale. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of outreach, as Kathy mentioned, to federal agencies. Uh, we have all set up some sort of a, of a big data infrastructure group, and those groups are now starting to speak to each other to see where there are gaps still on, in, in big data infrastructure, and, and can we, given the nature of what we are and given the national scale, uh, do something to help meet those gaps. Uh, just very quickly to give you a sense of, of, uh, of where the funding uh, came from, so 3.3 million to our spoke projects, and, and you'll hear about those uh, in more detail a little bit later today. Uh, the Microsoft Azure credits, it's $3 million across the hub, so our portion of that is $750,000. Uh, and Vani's gonna talk about uh, the first training session that we're gonna have, uh, and we're gonna make those available to, to all of you in the community. So we'll have some more detail about that uh, in, shortly. Um, and then uh, we talked about the, uh, the Computing Community Consortium. Uh, they are the ones who funded our internship program, uh, which were really very effective both for the students and for the companies who normally would not be able to afford uh, to bring on interns. I'm not gonna focus a lot on the Spoke Awards because you're gonna hear a lot about them uh, shortly, but I, I just wanna make the point again about how we've been able to, with, with each of these initiatives, bring together the multiple stakeholders across sectors. So this is uh, our, our health project and the idea of the health project on a high level, and Shirag will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but the idea here is to try to take advantage of a very large data set. It's a, a federated data set with a shared uh, common data model called the Odyssey data set, which represents somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 700 million patient records, and combine that with an exposome data set, so everything from environmental exposure to toxins and allergens to sociodemographic uh, factors, migration patterns, et cetera, uh, and then to, to provide some sort of causal analytic tools on top of that combined data set. So you see here on, I guess, your left, uh, there are five federal agencies that are already involved in the, in the exposome project that's, uh, that was launched by a Harvard Medical School. Uh, in the middle, you see four universities involved, and then our proxy for a for-profit company is Partners Healthcare, which is really a nonprofit, but more or less, you get the idea. Um, so this is, again, illustrating our, what our platform can do to bring sectors together. This was the launch for our, our uh, data sharing uh, effort, which is, which is now also a spoke award. And what's important here is, is two things. One is the approach. It's not just about the technology. This is an approach to try to create a platform to allow both open and closed data sets to be shared more effectively. But trying to look at what some of the early challenges are in data sharing, starting with uh, licensing or, or data sharing agreements. So what we've been hearing a lot is that these take six months to a year to get through, and most organizations recreate them from scratch. So the notion here is can we create an umbrella agreement that captures 60 or 70% of what you need up front so that you're only negotiating 30 or 40% of it, and then can you embed that in the underlying platform so that when somebody logs in, you already know what data sets they have access to, what IP rights they have, what audit trails you need to have for them, et cetera. Um, the other thing to point out is in that photo, we have representation from Experian, Jackson, the room in the back, uh, and Experian's uh, doing uh, a lot of work with us to try to share their data sets, uh, including with the health project, by the way. Um, We've got Experian, Comcast, IMS Health, uh, GE was in the room, a lot of companies, uh, DARPA, NSF, NIH, NIST, a lot of federal agencies, multiple universities and multiple nonprofits, again, in keeping with the theme of our ability to bring folks together. Um, this is uh, one, our, our third uh, Spoke Award, which is in education, and, and the idea here is to try to take advantage of all of the advances in e-learning and to really bring the community of administrators and educators into the fold so that they understand how to use these tools more effectively. Again, this theme that it's not just about the technology, it's about how that technology intersects with people. So I'm gonna, we only have five minutes left, so I'm gonna go really quickly through what's next. Uh, so we're uh, gonna focus on making sure that the projects that we've launched are, are actually moving along and that they have what they need in order to, to uh, continue. Uh, we're going to be working with uh, different proposers for the next NSF solicitation. We don't know when that's going to be released yet, but it's, uh, it's going to be released at some point in the year. Uh, so we'll make that uh, announcement and, and we'll work with folks who want to apply for that. Uh, in terms of new initiatives, 
Uh, we want to uh, reestablish the, the innovator internships. That's something that's important to us because it was, it was so effective as a project. Uh, we want to move along in creating the big data resource map pilot. So we're going to try to find uh, not only bring in the graduate students, but find maybe some additional sources of funding to, to make that uh, move along a little bit quicker. Uh, we are exploring uh, consortium models, in particular a transportation and a cybersecurity insurance one, which sounds a little bit interesting given what we do. Uh, but the possibility there, we've been approached by a, a number of large companies in, in the space. Um, there's a big gap in the ability to actually underwrite cybersecurity liability insurance effectively, which is creating some real problems and potentially create some economic problems uh, because they're being attached to regular liability policies, general liability policies. We see this, A, as a big data problem because a lot of it has to do with the data that the, that the insurers have access to. But also, it's a possibility of actually moving the needle and getting more organizations to adopt the more effective cybersecurity solution. So it's something that we'd like to explore uh, and, and see if there's a there there. Uh, expanded access to data is very important. So Experian is, is our first trial balloon there. They have very, very deep databases, which they're making available to, to folks within the hubs, across all four hubs. Uh, we want to expand those programs and bring in other organizations that can also do that. Um, and we are putting together a cross-hub communication plan so that people understand where one hub ends and the other begins and, and how we uh, work as a unit as well. Um, we are also exploring an executive education pilot. We've partnered, uh, I, I don't know if we can say the name because we don't have an agreement signed, but we've partnered with a large education organization uh, to explore this space. We've, we've been hearing from a lot of folks that there's a fundamental gap between practitioners and data scientists in really understanding how to speak each other's language. So this isn't about technical training. There are a lot of organizations that already focus on technical training. This is about understanding how to even think about data sciences, uh, both from a use perspective and also from, a, from an organizational capacity building perspective. So if you're an executive, uh, as an example, how do you even begin to think about what you need with regard to data science? How do you interact with your teams effectively? And how do you take the output of those teams and, and use them to run your business effectively or uh, if you're a practitioner in another, another area to do what it is that you do? Uh, and vice versa, there, you know, the problems in both directions. We're hearing a lot that uh, the data scientists that are coming out into industry or other types of organizations are very well prepared technically, but they don't necessarily understand how to operate within those contexts. So there's, I think there's room for training on both sides that makes uh, the, the ability to adopt data science solutions uh, a little bit easier. Uh, community engagement is something else that we really want to focus on now that we've done a lot of the housekeeping work and we, we've put our governance structures in place, et cetera. We've been getting a lot of engagement and we really want to expand that across our different areas beyond just the funded projects. And uh, finally, I'll say what, what we want, what we hope from you throughout the course of the day and, and through the breakouts is to double down on that engagement. We, we need your feedback. Everything that we built is, is, is based on what your needs are. So we need to understand what those needs are on a continuous basis as they change. Um, and uh, we, we want you guys to be cheerleaders for us. We want everybody in the room to, to talk about the work that we're doing and bring people to us that you think can benefit from, from our platform. And, and finally, I want to thank uh, our, our sponsors who are partners in, in, in multiple ways with the Hub and have been great friends to the Hub. So Elsevier, uh, PSSC Labs, and, and Microsoft have been uh, really great friends to us, and, and we're hoping to build upon those relationships. So thank you very much. I, I don't, do we have time? I don't know if we have. Yeah, so if, does anybody have any questions? We can, we can take one or two questions, maybe. So we're in discussions with three very large companies about this, uh, one of whom started to create their own solution internally, but they really like the idea of not having to do that themselves. Um, so the idea there is can we create a platform that covers 80% of what's needed to more effectively underwrite insurance? And a lot of that is actually gathering best practices in, in, in cybersecurity, understanding where the gaps are, understanding how organizations are using these solutions and providing that data to the insurance carriers. So what they're telling us is if we can create 80% you know, of that and allow the companies to, to do their own thing, to, to still have a little bit of a competitive advantage, that that would be really a big win for them. 
Um, so it's, it's at the beginning, really, of the discussions, but it, they seem pretty promising right now.